Huge thanks to the wonderful folks over at GLHF Mag. Definitely check them out, GLHF Magazine. And I am back, not with Husky, <gasps> with the inimitable Chris Sigety. How are you doing, Chris? <laughs> good, very we, good. We do the official handshake. All right, Hello, thank welcome. Thank you for having me here, Sean. Now, I understand the Heart of Swarm is actually officially launched in some places in the world. It is. So far, so good, knocking on tablecloth. Knock on tablecloth. Yes. I don't know how much luck potential is in cloth, but it seems to have been suiting Husky and I quite well for the broadcast. Good. Now, of course, um, normally I'm known for my hard-hitting interviews <laughs> where I ask the questions that really drive home. So let's go ahead and start with the shirt, the jersey. Yes. This is, is hard-hitting. This is our official Heart of the Swarm launch jersey that the whole <laughs> dev team got. It's even an official... Is that... What, what? I actually thought that it was like going to be like a league type logo. Can we actually get a zoom in on the on the logo right above, where it says Heart of the Swarm right above? Yeah, yeah. it's a new hockey team. We're going all pro all the way. No. <laughs> is, is it hockey? Yeah. All the oh, dev teams could are going to football. Just... We might do all of them. You know, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, they the guys on the team put this together. Sammy and several uh, several <laughs> other guys on the team spent time on this and it's <laughs> awesome we're totally excited we had a couple of um, hijinks with these sizes and stuff for the team but it's all coming together today for launch day so we're, we're really excited yeah now now i know that you and i know each other but mm -hmm. some of the viewers who are watching right now might not could you just tell us who you are and how long you've been working at blizzard yeah my name's chris sigety i'm production director on the starcraft 2 team or internally as we're known as team one um, I've been at Blizzard for almost 17 years now, and um, I have a history that goes all the way back to lead testing the original StarCraft, and then I was a QA manager when Brood War came out, and um, yeah, so I've had a relationship with StarCraft for a very, very long time. So actually, tell me, because yeah, I, I think you know that I really like Brood War. Mm -hmm. I think that game's awesome. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, been I've known heard to, that one. I've been known to play it something. every now and again. Um, so what was it like when you first stepped in and started playing and testing and, and working on StarCraft? The original game? Yeah. Um, you know, I came in at the end of WarCraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal and actually saw the beginnings of StarCraft and all that. And so, although I wasn't working directly on the development team at, at the time, it was, it was exciting. I actually went through the whole evolution too and took the build that we showed at the uh, first, was it, it wasn't, um, E3, which was out in Atlanta at the time, and I carried the build there, and that was the Orcs in Space build, if you if you remember. Um, yeah. That was you. you you've like yeah, physically I, held I it. I brought the build there and, and handed it off, and then we completely changed direction after that. <laughs> and, um, you know, how things have changed. We were so organic and just from the seat of our pants. QA was literally a bunch of people that worked locally here and tried our best to have testing practices and things, but it was all very much people just banging on keys as, as much as possible. And so I, even with how, Star, how StarCraft evolved, the original game, how it evolved, how we tested it, we did not test it anywhere near the level that, you know, you yeah. as a player and, and you as the, as the professional esports players ended up playing it. We were, we were testing it like normal humans and then came the esports team. So I think <laughs> for a lot of my couple of years after StarCraft, including Brood War, how it felt was just sitting there biting my nails the whole time going, holy crap, the screen is going to crash. It's going to crash. Something's going to happen bad. Um, but it held together. So I'm still impressed to this day still. You know, I want to know what it was like playing the game from a, like, just for fun perspective. Because, you know, like with QA, you're trying to, like, make sure you find all the crashes, make sure the game's stable and that sort of thing. But obviously they're making changes to the balance and the design and all that stuff. Was there, like, a moment where you, like, played one of those games before it was released where you were like, oh. There are. Oh there gosh, are there's like definitely moments. I call it the kind of aha moment for all of our games where when you first sit down, you, the vision may not be completely in the builds yet. Mm -hmm. So you're, um, you know, really looking at it from, well, it's functioning or it's doing this thing I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. And then there's, you cross a, a point where you're really starting to get a sense of excitement. Uh, I remember that very distinctly with StarCraft. I remember that very distinctly with World of Warcraft, for example. And, um, but you have to get to that point. So thinking of stories specifically with StarCraft, I, you know, I loved the, as an example is today, I'm still fascinated by the, the lore and, and what came together in stories. And I think things have changed very dramatically from StarCraft to StarCraft II with how missions are played, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how, you, how you experience that story versus the old days. It was all heads in a, and basically in a, uh, you know, yeah, adjutants it, it talking was, to you. Yeah, basically it was like the heads, heads on yeah, the screen, right, just, just like talking arranged. in 
and you were listening um, more so than interacting, and now you're interacting, but I still have moments in StarCraft II that harken back to things that happened in the original StarCraft, and I worked on the game, and there is that sense of uh, exhaustion of playing it a lot, but you still get a sense of, um, I mean, a QA exhaustion. When you played it that much and you're looking at this specific thing over and over again, you yeah, think yeah. that, um, you know, you, you are doing a job at some point, but... There's moments in StarCraft 2, specifically in Heart of the Swarm, where uh, even me working on this game for a very long time, like, tear in the corner of the eye. I have never cried, though, of course. I would never cry. Oh, no. It's, but, it's, right. you, you get, like, choked <laughs> up, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. If someone asked you for something, you might have to be forced out. Yeah, right? yeah. You'll right. never. But I would never admit it to anybody publicly, but between you and I privately while we sit here. Solidly, while well, we have just these tears in the corner incidental yeah. headsets yeah. on with lights. Oh, yeah. Mm. I didn't really. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so Brood War... <clears throat> So Brood War happened, exploded, mm -hmm. huge pro scene, and it, you know before StarCraft, esports was just sort of a concept that a couple idea had thought of, and then you know in the development of StarCraft II, it's coming up. I know that that was like a huge sort of thought at the front of the mind. But what about some of just the other general design features? Like what changes from like making a game like Brood War to when you first embark upon StarCraft II: Wings of Liberty? Uh, well, pressure, I would say, because <laughs> that, that was probably the main thing was we knew, we, we very much, it, that eSport aspect was known. We did not know that, even making Brood War. Brood War, uh, I mean, we knew we wanted to make it more competitive and um, have even better balance and, and more options to players, go, thinking back to Brood War to StarCraft. With StarCraft 2, now here there's this real eSport landscape, and we had to take that into consideration, and that was a lot of pressure, because yeah. it was, you know, Brood War was very well-renowned, so now here we are with StarCraft II, oh god, how are we going to do this? So we had some ideals that we put in place right, right from the get-go about wanting to really hark into the legacy, as I've said many times in the past, and ensure that people that had played the original definitely understood and knew what StarCraft II was, but I still think as we got further and further into development of StarCraft II, what did that really mean and how did that play out? How would people receive it? For me, there was a lot of nervousness as we went up to the announcement and, and through the development of the different races and how much is different enough and how much is, uh, you know, every unit went through a battle, for example. Yeah. Every single unit. Like, are you going to touch the Marine? No, no, we would never touch the Marine. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we're going to touch this unit. And it was like reaching forward to touch something. Oh! And everybody would, you know, freak out and then, oh, okay, how about this? And, and, Pretty much every unit had that, so it was, a, it was just this very interesting dynamic of trying to balance what would be best for what we were trying to achieve with StarCraft II, which was a sense of evolution to the game, mm -hmm. um, and still make sure that we kept fans that from the original games wanting and interested in StarCraft II. Does that change as like Heart of the Swarm is coming out? Do you feel like less pressure? Like, okay, we have this, you know, solid foundation to work with. We've sort of seen the way the balance has played out or or, or is it like a different kind? You know, it changed. It, it, it did change a little bit. I, I think establishing StarCraft II was m more nerve-wracking from my perspective at least. I can't speak for the whole team, but with Heart of the Swarm, uh, I, you know, I in my job as production director, I do a lot of um, watching and admiring because we have so many great members of the team that do so many things that I, I just find amazing too, where I can come into a build and mm -hmm. play it or see a new movie that the Cinemax guys have just finished up or gotten to sort of a, a first, first pass point or an animatic and be genuinely, genuinely amazed by it. And um, I, I hate saying, like, oh, they did such a great job, because it makes it sound like I'm saying we're so awesome. But no, there are guys and girls here at the company that have done this, and there are many opportunities during Heart of the Swarm. Like, this is awesome. You know, I just felt like watching it. Um, <laughs> you know, yes! I, yeah, and, and a lot of times that is what I'm do, where I hear the game plan, and if there's something crazy where it sounds like that, that's going against, I think, what our goals are, we'll have a conversation. But, you know, they're nailing it all the folks on the team are nailing it on the different teams throughout the company and they really did and so there are a lot of moments where I just felt a lot of confidence in what they were doing and I thought it was great but um, the the thing where I got honestly the most nervous was with multiplayer because again w we go back to it it's like once again you're reaching in for you and oh yeah what do you do oh, oh get this one and so it was such a, a, hot, a hard fought battle and um, Honestly, I, it was difficult too. The, the landscape was really coming together for Wings of Liberty and the eSport ecosystem was actually at a really good point and, and here we are going to go in and now 
muddle with it and fu futz with it well we're um you know things are going well so that was probably the most nerve-wracking thing but if i had to compare wings of liberty in the initial starcraft 2 opportunity heart of the swarm mm -hmm. i was more nervous with wings of liberty because it was sort of here comes starcraft 2 oh god what does the world think i now feel like you know that Wings of Liberty was well received, and we were very happy with where it's gotten to, and, and so yeah. Heart of the Swarm. And then I watched, like I said, watched things come in, and as they came in, and uh, story was established, and the missions, that, the mechanics the guys have done on some of the missions are really cool. I think the world will be pleasantly surprised with some of the stuff they've done, some boss battles and things that are just nuts that I wouldn't have thought we would achieve in this engine um, that are really cool and fun. So I, it, for me, as judging it from afar it just felt really good and i felt more confident with heart of the swarm well, on that note confident. on that note i want to ask about uh -huh. some of your favorites so is there like a favorite new thing coming in heart of the swarm that like you personally not as like a, a you know it's like a fan as someone who who i, I know you play you know starcraft mm -hmm. 2 just for fun in your mm -hmm. spare time like what is like then what's some of the new things that you're just pumped to well, have everyone use the thing i'm the most excited about is some of it's already arrived for play players that are active right now, which is the whole new evolution into multiplayer. I think we've been hearing this all the way back to the launch of StarCraft II is, do you have something in there? The press would say this sometimes, say, do you have something in there for me? I, I, you know, I love the game, I love the campaign, but multiplayer is just, it's so hardcore, is there something in there for me? And I feel like the, the way the guys put together the new screens coming into training, it's this transition to get you into realizing, you know what, it is a person, and you talk about this yourself, like it, it's a personal self uh, exploration uh, uh, legacy. Yeah, really. yeah. Like you, you're in there and you realize you fall in love with just leveling up your game that little bit each time and it's not about being a pro gamer. Maybe it is or was for you. It's what it's about, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> um, well, I can't touch that, I don't think, ever. And I realize it, but I still have a really good time understanding that I'm improving. And it was hard to get people to that spot. I think you play the campaign, you think you've established something, you go and it was likely that you would play a game or two and then face the opponent really rough and it's like, okay, I can't, I can't put up with this pressure. And the new, the new way it functions with training going into versus AI, which actually kind of ranks you in that same way. You can take a loss, it'll move you up and down, mm -hmm. and then go to unranked, then finally to competitive if you, you want to go there. It's there. It, for those people who didn't feel the confidence, I feel like that confidence is there. So it's probably the feature I'm most excited about. And that that combines into the EX, the, to the experience point system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. that You just start earning some levels and see some of your performance stats improving. And you know, had, I will ahead. say, like, I, I, I personally didn't think that that would be something I would I would value. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, I've always just been like, all right, let's just get on a ladder. Let's do it. You know, I'm... Right. I'm, a t I'm a total tryhard, right? right? Like anything. I mean, a a any time I hop into any other game, I just want to go straight into the competitive. Right. And I still remember like losing and being like, ah, oh, stupid, I made a terrible mistake. And then I got XP for it. And I was like, I'm a level 12 Protoss. Yeah. I, it's so it's it's weird the it, way that that just, just like, it is makes it more engaging. And there's a lot of games that do that today. That, that yeah, I mean, even going to mobile games and this sort of stuff, like, you can kind of say, well, what would it, they all do this stuff. But there's a, a psychological side effect to it, I think that is uh, important. And it gets you over just worrying about a win or a loss. And honestly, you have played Brood War. We have none of that. You know, go all yeah. the way back to the old days. So I think it's easy to get caught up in how it was and saying, why would you need that? But the world has changed and considerably. And so I think it really will help uh, people that to overcome that. And at least find the relationship with just playing to get a little bit better from game to game to game. And if they never go and play ranked games, that's okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's just finding that fun, you know, and I'll, we've had uh, several examples now on the team of people who weren't playing and they played, playing through our training missions and they suddenly caught the bug. And I think that's, at least we'll see, but indicative of something more to get that fun that we know this hardcore audience that has stayed around for so long and followed eSport for so long. Um, we know there's a relationship there and an excitement there that some people just can't get to, at least couldn't get to, and now I'm hoping that this will be that and yeah. we'll see what happens. So that's my most, yeah, that's my most favorite thing, the, the thing I'm most excited about. So I have one final question sure. for you, Chris. So I, I, I know I've seen you at NASL and MLG mm -hmm. just hanging out and watching the games, and Wings of Liberty, finally, I think, I think there's no more Wings of Liberty major tournaments. I'm, I'm just going to assert that that's true. They're done. Um, and now everyone's moving on over to Heart of the Swarm, but what was been some of your 
or your one favorite or most memorable esports moment that you were there for? Yeah, um, well, there's been so many exciting games that I've seen, uh, but the, the one that was the most exciting for me personally because of where I was at was BlizzCon 2000, I think it was 2011, which was um, MVP playing against Nest T. And the games were so nuts and so um, just, they had so many units across the field that they were making mistakes that I could even see and normally I would never be able to pick out the mistakes they were making. They, they, they were sending drops in and, and uh, entirely full drop ships or overlords were, were just dying to whatever and it was nuts. It went back and forth and back and forth. And, oh, yeah, it was um, the Shakuras Plateau game. I remember that yes. one, yeah. And, and um, MVP ended up winning but it didn't look like it. You're like, oh, what's he doing? I, I, I remember it flipping back and forth. But they would just pan the audience. There were so many people there. It was just nuts. And I, it was, you know, to sit there and watch it, this stuff is all still crazy, I think, on a daily basis to me. Um, and I think a lot of us here just coming in and going, this is crazy. Where you know, <laughs> Do you see how many people are out in this audience right now? And so it's really humbling and, and not, but that, that was super exciting um, and just amazing to see that many people watching it. So it had a special place because of the event itself and you're trying to make sure that's great. And um, it, it was in front of so many people and had such excitement. And for me, BlizzCon um, is generally World of Warcraft focused, right? There's so many people there because of World of Warcraft, but there was 10,000 people sitting enthralled. And I'm thinking, those are really World of Warcraft folks, right? And they were, but they were just as excited, I think, as the hard, hardest of the hardcore esports fans. So it was yeah. really, really exciting. Yeah. Well, Chris, I'd like to say thank you so yeah, much for coming for out. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I know, I know that everyone on the Blizzard team has been up for a very long time because games are getting launched all over the place. That's and I'm right. very excited to say I will be continuing to stay up with you, as will uh, the rest of everyone else. The North American launch is coming up in uh, about 11 hours, That's nine right. and a half hours or so. Getting close. I, I feel for you, my friend, staying in there with Sting I got this. You have. I know you do. The European You're launch is, is going to be the break time. Yeah. We're going to be coming back. So, guys, I just wanted to say, do continue to stay tuned. And thanks once again to Chris Sigety for taking the time to hang out with us. When we come back, we have just a few more videos to go before the European launch kicks off at 11 a.m. PDT. So without any further ado, we're stepping away, and we'll be back in just a sec to wrap up the Community Launch Event Part 1.